In this lesson, we want to talk about the continuous compound interest formula, the A equals P times our special number E raised to the power of R times T. So we've already worked with the compound interest formula, and we've already used it to solve some simple word problems. Let's just look at this real quick. We have A, the future value, is equal to P, the principal or present value of your investment, times the quantity 1 plus R, which is the rate as a decimal, divided by N, the number of compounding periods per year. And this guy inside the parentheses is raised to the power of T, which is the time in years, times N, again, the number of compounding periods per year. So if we want to kind of build up to this idea of continuously compounding interests, let's start out with what we know. So I have a basic example here so we can compare them. We have $1,000 is invested at an annual interest rate of 10%. Give the account balance after one year for the different compounding periods. So we've got quarterly, monthly, daily, and continuously. And we can just blow through this real quick. We know the formula. Let me just write it again. It's A equals, you've got P times the quantity, 1 plus R over N, raised to the power of T times N. Okay, so what you want to do is just plug in and use your calculator. It's really simple. So for quarterly, this is going to be compounded four times per year. So four times per year, they're going to give you your interest, deposit it in there, and then you're going to earn interest on that interest. Okay, so for the P, the principal, it's $1,000. It's the amount invested. And this is times one plus, if you have R, that's the rate as a decimal, so that's 0.1. Then over N, which in this case is going to be four, right? The number of compounding periods. It's raised to the power of T times N. Now, in this case, our T, our number of years is one. So you can just forget about that because multiplying by one is going to leave something unchanged. So we just put N there, which is four. So if you punch this up on a calculator, you're going to get approximately, and I'm just rounding this number, $1,103.81. Again, I rounded this. So let's just put this, I'm just going to kind of slide this down. Let's put this over here. We'll say this is $1,103.81. Now, for a given interest rate and a given time period, if I increase the number of compounding periods or how often I give you your interest so that interest is earning interest, I should have more money right at the end of that kind of time period. So let's see this. So for monthly, all I want to do is put a 12 here and a 12 here. Everything else is the same. If you punch this up on a calculator, you're going to get about $1,104.71. Again, it's an estimate. We're just rounding. So let's go ahead and put this as $1,104.71. Again, we increased the number of compounding periods from 4 to 12, and we saw that we ended up with more money at the end of the year. Now, if we go with daily, that would be 365 days for a normal year. If it was a leap year, it would be 366 so in this case, if you punch that up on a calculator, you're going to get, again, if you round, about $1,105.16. So let's erase this formula. We don't need it anymore. So we have this, $1,105.16. Now, there is a theoretical maximum number of compounding periods that you can kind of get to. In other words, if we took this N here and we kept increasing it, Right? Instead of 365, we went to a thousand, then to a million, then to a trillion. We just went towards infinity. What happens is as we're continuously getting interest deposited into our account, our money is continuously compounding, then the formula changes a bit, okay? And it involves our special number E. So we say A is equal to P times the special number E. Remember that's about 2.718 raised to the power of R times T. So the R again is the rate as a decimal, the T is the time in years. So this is a really simple formula to use. In this case, P again is the principal. So it's 1000 times E, okay? And that's gonna be on your calculator. Raised to the power of R, which is 0.1, and then times T, which is one. So really you can just get rid of this part and say we have 1000 times E raised to the power of 0.1. And if you punch that up on a calculator, you get about $1,105.17. So you can see it's very close to what we got with daily. And if you continued out, if you went with 1,000 and then 2,000 and 3,000, as you keep increasing the number of compounding periods, you get closer and closer to this kind of number that you get from this formula here. All right, let's look at another example. This is a very easy concept. Just memorize the formula and plug into it. That's all you have to do. 
So we have that James invests $2,000 in a savings account paying 3% annual interest compounded continuously for seven years. What is the account balance at the end of the term? Very easy, again, A equals P times E raised to the power of R times T. Most of this is just memorizing the formula. Hopefully your teacher lets you write it down on a piece of scratch paper, but basically you're just gonna plug in. So for P I have 2000, then times E raised to the power of R times T. In this case, the rate is 3%. So as a decimal, it's 0 0.03. And then the time in years is seven, so it's times seven. So basically 0 0.03 times seven, just think about three times seven, that's 21. You'd have two decimal places there, so it would be 0 0.21. And if you punch that up on a calculator, you're going to get approximately $2,467.36. So if you wanted to make a nice little sentence, you can. Let me just erase this real quick. We'll use that number. So we'll just say that James has, and I'll just kind of drag this up here. So $2,467.36 at the end of the term. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. Again, this is super simple. So Susan wants an investment with an annual interest rate of 6%, which is compounded continuously. A zero coupon bond can be redeemed in five years for $10,000. How much should Susan pay for this bond? So first and foremost, let me explain this zero coupon bond in case you've never taken a finance course before. Basically, these trade at a discount, so they don't pay any interest. You're not getting any payments while you own the bond. You basically just get a discount to the kind of price that you're going to get at the end. So it would be like if you loaned me $50, and at the end of, let's say, two years, I gave you back 100 but during that two-year period, you didn't see any money. So that's what this is like. So we know that, let me kind of write the formula down. Again, it's A is equal to P times E raised to the RT. We know that she wants to earn an interest rate of 6%. So I can go ahead and erase this and put 0 0.06. And we also know that this investment is for five years, so times five. If you want to go ahead and do that, it would be 0.3 or 0 0.30 if you wanted to write that. So you can just put 0 0.3 here. E, we don't need to really worry about that. That's built into our calculator. But the P, the principal, is what? Well, well, that's what we want to solve for because we want to know how much should Susan pay for this bond? How much should Susan pay for the bond? We don't know. But we have the amount she's going to get at the end, right? At the end of this, in the five years, she's going to get $10,000. So I'm just going to erase this and put my 10000 here, put my comma in. And basically, I just want to solve for P. So I want to divide both sides by E raised to the power of 0.3, and I'll have my answer. So let me just kind of erase it from over here. And you can punch that up on a calculator. And what you're going to get, let me just kind of erase this, and I'll just do this over here. It's going to be approximately $7,408.18. So that's how much she should pay for the bond. Again, she wants a 6% annual interest rate where it's being compounded continuously and it's a zero coupon bond. So she pays this amount and five years later, she gets this amount. So let's go ahead and write that down as our answer and just say that Susan should pay. And I'm gonna put this $7,408.18 just for the 